Welcome to What's the 311, the official podcast of the city of Malden, where you will find resident questions answered, what's happening and what's to come in Malden, what's new in Malden business, special guests, and more. What's the 311? All Malden, all the time. And now, here's your host, Mayor Christensen. Hello, Malden, and welcome to this month's What's the 311 podcast. And you are in for a real treat if you're looking to listen about a man who has made us all proud here in the city of Malden. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a big round of applause for the one, the only, Breno Giacomini. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Well, we're so glad to have you back, and uh, what makes it more impressive about your return is you're just not um, passing through. You're actually here to provide a uh, free football camp through the um, uh, through you and Gary Bonnage, and mm-hmm. I wanted to first really compliment you on doing so. So at this time, I'd like you to just maybe talk a little bit about the camp and what motivates you to provide that for Malden's kids. Well, uh, it's you know it's just a free football camp. We just skills and drills basically. Um, it's just something that I didn't have growing up, especially you know something that's free. So you know when when we made it, me and Gary were roommates in college. We we always said we'd give back to the community. Um, so we formed this, I guess this foundation called uh, American Football Without Barriers, and uh, we throw a football camp in his hometown and in mine. So. And uh, what uh, year is this for Malden? Uh, I believe this is seven. Wow. I think we had one year off because they had to redo the field. Yeah. Uh, and we couldn't relocate because right. we're going to stay in Malden. That's right. Uh, so it's this is year seven, and it, you know, hopefully we'll get to 50, 60 years. We'll and see. again, I just can't say enough about it. I mean, you look at where you've traveled. You've had this camp all over the world. Yes. Yet you always make sure – that uh, Malden is included, and uh, on behalf of the community, we just couldn't say thank you enough. No, yeah, we appreciate it. It's not surprising, because if you know what kind of an individual Breno Giacomini is, you would understand. Uh, For instance, back when he won the Super Bowl with the Seahawks, um, we had sent him a text congratulating him and letting him know that we look forward to honoring him. And this text back from Breno to me is one that I've always treasured and saved. And it says, uh, thanks for the support. It means a lot to get a text from you. Uh, most people in the city don't say that, first of all. <laughs> and the love coming from the city is greatly appreciated. This is the sentence that I tell a lot of students about today. I know where the path started, and I will never forget that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, again, we just wanted to say thank you. Um, so, the camp will be for two days, and yes. what uh, ages do you try to capture? We try, it's like sixth grade through the 12th grade. Okay. You know, it's, we kind of play around with that a little bit. Uh, maybe in the future we'll, we'll get a little bit younger. You okay. know, that's the plan Okay. Uh, to affect more kids. Uh, but right now it's, it's sixth grade and up. Okay. And what do the kids learn at the camp? Well, it's, you know, it's a lot about football, and we always, uh, we always have something on the back of our shirts. You know, maybe uh, like trust or compete, okay. you know, finish. Uh, there's always a theme to the camp. So uh, this year it's going to be the theme for AFWB is compete, but the theme for our camp this year is trust. Great. Uh, you know, trust your parents, trust your coaches, you know, trust in, in the people that you look up to. Okay. And I think uh, also you wanted to make sure uh, all the kids know to stay hydrated. Yes, please. Yeah. And I took, uh, I took that into account myself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, we don't want anybody cramping out there or getting hurt. Okay, well, we look forward to seeing um, all the pictures and videos and, um, you know, the good time that we know the kids are going to have Absolutely. at the camp. Um, while I have you, a couple other questions I wanted to ask you. What is your impression as you come home from time to time? How has it changed for you? Now, be very careful with this answer. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's it's been good. Uh, yeah, I don't come home a lot. I wish I'd, I could get home a little bit more than I do, but every time I come home, you know, the city's changing. It's in a good way. 
but it, it's been good. The city of Malden is expanding, and, and I love it. You know, I, I'm just I'm still playing, so that's why I can't be part of it right now. But yeah. that's definitely in, in in the plans for the future. What's your most memorable success story uh, in the six or se- the seven years of these camps? Is there any one moment that stood out to you? Uh, from from Malden itself. Yeah. Um, a uh, parent came up to you or a kid. Yeah, or, you know, it's just the support. You know, yeah. it's it's well, okay, this is the best one. I'm I'm just I just came out of the big A and I'm coming down the street to go actually to watch a basketball game or something. I forgot what it was. And when you when you're driving by and see those kids with with that shirt on, you know, and, and right. they're still rocking it all over the basically all over Malden, you know. Yeah. Uh that's 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 pretty cool to see that these kids actually believe it and they're buying in, you know. Uh and and still supporting me, you know, and I, I love to support them. So when you see that, you know, just driving randomly, you know, on Easton, yeah, and, and see that, that's that's pretty cool. Okay, how big can this AFWB get? Is uh, it maxed out where it is now, or is it still no, growing? No, no, it's um, it's definitely still growing. We actually just applied for five hundred one C three status, which yeah. is going to be huge for us. Uh, we applied for it, uh, you know, like. Four years ago, okay, but we did it the wrong way. Uh, okay, so we we got some advice. We got we talked to some lawyers, and you know we we expect this to to really grow really really fast here in, in the next few years. Okay, great. Um, I have to ask you this now: um, What would you do if you were coaching the Malden High School Golden Tornadoes? How do we overcome Everett? What's your advice to us? Uh, just keep working at it. That's you know, it, just, right? Just keep, you know, we need more. We need everybody participating in these like captain practices and 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 spring ball and in in the weight room and you just got to buy in all the time because they're doing it over there. You right. know, they've been doing it over there. Right. Uh, and it's gotten better since I've since I've left. That's for sure. You know, our weight room is is brand new. Right. You know, our our field is probably top in the state. Right. I mean, it's it's getting better. We just you got to keep growing. That's yeah. all it is. You don't take it step by step. And that's another thing I like about the camp because it's a reminder that uh, despite um, the season not being in effect now, now's the time to work at it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what yes. your camp does. It you know, yeah. reminds the players it's a year-round commitment. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, too, think we're getting there. I've noticed in my four years as mayor that the program is um, getting better and better. Last year they started yeah. off, I think, 5-0. and oh. Yes, they did. Yeah. Um, so I think they're making progress. Um, what was it like, you know, bringing the camp home home to your native country but a sill oh it was that was awesome you know that's uh when was that was that last year that was two years two ago. years ago yeah okay. we uh when we sat down at pf chains me and my partners the goal was to go to a country like um my buddy ahmed is my partner is from egypt so okay. that was the initial idea and i was fine with it but i'm like we got to go to brazil too because that's where i'm from right. so uh, you know, kind of build it within the roots, and then we've just expanded. We went to Istanbul this year, okay. Istanbul, Turkey, and that was that was pretty cool. Okay. Um, let me ask you, based on what we're seeing here locally with flag football, mm-hmm. do you see that um, more and more families might turn to that mm-hmm. instead of contact football? And if so, how does the NFL counteract that moving forward? Uh, you know what? I think it's a good idea. Okay. Um, you know what? I have a, a six-year-old, and I want her to specialize in volleyball. Okay. She doesn't even know what a volleyball looks like All right. <laughs> right now. And it's because these kids get worn out, you know. And so you start real, real young. You don't want to specialize in anything. So I think a good way to counter that is like flag football, for example, where you're not always getting that contact every day, you know. Yeah. Um, and it and was uh, interesting. The NFL, I think, is involved with flag yeah, football. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pushing it, for sure. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and so what's their thinking? They cover in both bases by making sure that uh, they're involved with a sport, you know, that could take off? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's You don't ever see that becoming pro, do you? Flag football? No, no, I don't. No, okay. But it's a good way to start, you know. If, right. I wouldn't put my kid, if I had a little a little boy, I wouldn't put him into football probably till the seventh, eighth grade. Okay. But until then, he can still learn how to play football right. and, you know, and the techniques and stuff. Really, you don't need a helmet to play. I mean, you do, but you don't. Yeah. Um, and that's a good way to start. It's, it's like a seven-on-seven seven flag football deal, which is pretty cool, too, because, you know, you're not – uh, some kid might be, like like I was, overweight to to play wide receiver. In flag football, that's 
that's a different story. Everybody can touch the ball and yeah. and have fun with it. So, and so you think they can coexist, but you never you never think flag football would cut into the NFL. No, no, yeah, okay. not at all, no. Speaking of the NFL, though, but some of these people retiring, did that surprise you this summer when some players decided to just hang it up you know what? on it, in their career? It doesn't surprise me. Uh, it, maybe a few years ago it did, but yeah. one of my best friends, John Moffitt, he he retired. Uh, he's actually coming back. Okay. Uh, he, so he took a few years off, but it doesn't surprise me. Okay. With, with the phys- how much physicality we put into it every single day, uh, look at this helmet. It's like a spaceship. Yeah, right. You know? Uh, <laughs> so it doesn't surprise me when guys are like, you know what? I'm, I'm just done with it. Okay. You know, they've, they've played you know, four years of high school, four years of college, maybe a year or two in, in the league, and they're just like, I'm just done with this. You know? Okay. So, so you don't think it's an indication that the league is in trouble or anything? No. Okay. No, no. Not at all. You no, know, right. I think guys are just getting smarter, and they want to they wanna live till they're 80, 90 years old. And sure. Maybe that's a way that they look at it. You know, okay. it's uh, let's minimize these these hits. Okay. Well, I hate. To, I wasn't going to ask this question, but the producer okay. Ron Cochran and Paul Hammersley here wanted me to ask. Any insight you can give us on what happens next week with uh, Goodell and Tom Brady? Uh, I I don't know. It's it's tough. It you could know? go either way. You think? It yeah, does? I think so. Yeah. Um, to take a great player like that off the field, yeah. I I don't I don't know if you can tell the difference between three psi in a football or not right you know, the, what was it like 25 degrees out yeah uh, and i play for the jets so i'm just, you, know. you would know yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, we're gonna bleep that pot out yeah, yeah. yeah that's all right <laughs> uh but we'll see what happens you know it's they have i guess they have a system and they sure. follow it you know if you did he did if he didn't he did yeah yeah i think my opinion was i mean he did beat seattle with regular pressured balls so i mean you know i I, i'm not sure how much to make of it either yeah i think well i think seattle beat themselves but good point yeah good point Uh, i mean you know the score was like 50 to 3 anyways you know they could have been playing with a a nerf ball for all i care i mean when the score is that and that's what they're playing it's an nfl game you know what i mean you don't ever see that type of score yeah Um, did a ball affect it that much who knows yeah you know um but you know if he's not on the field when we play him you know it's it's an advantage to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of which, what is the prognosis for the – and, again, we'll bleep this out – for the Jets this year? Uh, we're going to be a lot better this year. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we brought in some really good defensive guys. No we, doubt. I mean, our defense should be in the top three. I okay. hope they are. Okay. Um, offense has to catch up a little bit. I was going to say it all yeah, comes down to QB, absolutely. right? Yeah. yeah. We have to get a little bit better, you know, run the ball consistently and and – Minimize the turnovers, yeah. and, and that's what it is. That's what will kill you in any NFL game is the turnovers. Um, and it's not just with the quarterback. You know, that's everybody. It's on offense. It's eleven guys have to be on the same page at all, mm-hmm. at all times. So he gets blamed for when you do bad, and he gets blamed for when you do good. But you know, I, I want people to know that sometimes it's the right tackle's fault for giving up too much pressure. Yeah, and you know that he just he just feels that and has to get rid of it quickly. And they get a jump on it, so yeah. it's not just the quarterback's fault. You know, we we have to get better as a whole group. And you predict also, as I do, I think the Bills and Dolphins should be right there too, right? Yeah, yeah. it's gonna. I think this. I see the same thing happening when I was in Seattle. We're gonna be the toughest division in football, right? You know, and and that's great. You know, we we're gonna okay. play the toughest teams twice a year. Yeah, and uh, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, before I forget, what do you recommend uh, to the students? at Malden High School today to get to where you are? What did it take and what's your advice to them? Uh, well, first, it, it definitely took a lot of schoolwork. You know, okay. you can't – people you, – you can't get on the field without the, with, without the schoolwork, you know. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's first and foremost. And then just hard work. I mean, uh, one of my coaches told me that just to outwork everybody. And at, I don't know when that hit me, but it hit me at some point. And so be, that's how I, I've been playing in the league. Like I'm not the – I'm probably down in the bottom as far as talent, but I'm definitely going to out-hustle you every single every single play. Yeah, and that's you what know? your reputation is, yes, as a matter yeah. of fact. And yeah. so, you know, just trusting trust your peers, trusting in the people that, you know, are telling you what to do because they've been there before. You know, yeah. when you're in high school, you're like, yeah, I got it, I got it. You don't got it. Yeah. You know, just uh, just keep listening and keep growing. 
and just the hard work. That's and what I, it takes. I like what you mentioned because I think it's understated in school sports that um, – as good as you may be, mm-hmm. it's not going to matter if you can't get on the field because of grades. Exactly, yeah, and, and that's the point. You know, it's I can't tell you the number of times I've seen such talented yeah. uh, players, but they can't play because they don't because they grades. can't get on the field, right. and then and then what? You yeah, know? right. They, you can't. The college scouts they don't see you playing. The first thing they ask is why isn't he playing? Is he yeah. hurt? Yeah, no, he's not hurt. It's, it's grades. Oh, well, they don't want to deal with that stuff. You right. know, it's like. I'm just going to keep chasing this kid. Once you get into college, you're a grown man. Yeah. You know, uh, and that's a fast transition. What about this, Breno, I wanted to ask you. Do you think it helped you and would it help other athletes to be in more than one sport? Because you did hoop and football, and did they complement each other and help you? Absolutely. To get to where um, you are? I didn't even play football my junior year to right. concentrate on, on basketball. But okay. this is not going back to that thing with flag football and specializing. You don't want to specialize in anything, not that young, you know? Yeah. Um, I think definitely two or three sports is, is the way to go. Okay. And it keeps you busy. You know, yeah. it, it keeps you busy, keeps you off the streets. Um, it's, it's something that helped me with my footwork. And okay. it, it, it helps everybody. I yeah. mean, everybody in, at the college level, D1, D2, you know, they've played three, four sports growing up. You know, so that's I, something you do support. You should absolutely. many sports you can. Like these uh, guys on the wall, them being the Malden High School boys soccer team, uh, mm-hmm. went undefeated this year. That's good. First time in school history. No, and yeah, yeah. and what, what I noticed was many of them are uh, are members of the indoor track and field I was about to say track yeah. athletes, no yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I grew up playing soccer. I'm, you know, my parents are from Brazil. Yeah. Uh, I, I played all the way up to the eighth grade, really. Okay. And then, you know, basketball. I couldn't I, – I was always doing something with sports. Okay. Like every single day, you okay. know. And it develops. It develops your footwork. It develops, you know, technique and, and – Ways that you don't think you would use it, but you will. You know, we have something called the basketball block. Oh, it's like, hey, coach, go back, look at this basketball block. Yeah. And, and it's just the box out technique, really. So uh, I definitely support that. Okay. Looking back, do you wish you had um, stayed with Hoop? You know, no, no. Okay. No not, the way, <laughs> not the way it's worked out. Yeah. No, right. yeah, but not this, the way it's worked this, out. <laughs> uh, growing up, I, you know, watching Michael Jordan and, and the Celtics and. I love Michael Jordan, and same thing with the Celtics. You know, I just love watching sports growing up. Um, every once in a while, I'm like, you know what, man, I could body that guy. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I could play in the league. Yeah. Does something <laughs> ever make it, you wonder what could have been in hoop? Yeah, you know, yeah. sometimes. Yeah, you yeah. Know, but, uh, but you fully moved on. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once yeah. I got dunked on down in, um, <laughs> in Florida at an AAU tournament, I was, I was like, I said, Coach, I'm going to play football next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I read in your bio, too, another thing that I think – made an impression on you was uh, Drew Bledsoe, right? Yes. And you had a chance to meet him? Yeah. My, uh, my father works at the Marriott. He's been there for like 30-something years now. And they, had, they always had their annual dinner there when Drew was on the team. And okay. One night he kept me up and he took me in there. And I had one of those starter pullovers, Patriots jackets. And, I mean, it's a formal dining. Everybody's in a suit and tie. And here comes this little 11-year-old. With a jacket for Drew to sign, you know, and he actually signed it. And I think that really, I don't know, that sparked something in, in me and, and just to follow him and, and enjoy the game of football. And, so uh, the fact that he took the time, which he didn't have to. Yeah, he didn't have to. He on was you. on stage and everything. Yeah. You know, it was, it was almost like, what's this kid doing? Yeah. And you uh, could see that rubs off on you. No, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I try to tell a lot of our employees and people that work with youth that first impression can be lasting. Yeah, it, it can, so for sure. You yeah. know, and I'm grateful for, for that one day, and that sticks out in my mind every day. You know? yeah. uh, especially when I come back home and, and always see the Patriots stuff. I'm always thinking, you know, everybody likes Tom Brady, but Drew Bledsoe was there bef- no a little doubt. bit before yeah. him. You know? Yeah, he was part of the resurgence. I Absolutely. had season tickets partly because he was selected in the draft. No, yeah. yeah. And, and plus he was, you know, I think he was six 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 seven. so – that helped me out, you know. I, I played quarterback for a few years, you know. Freshman team, we I was the quarterback, and then I started a few varsity games, and yeah. and so he, he definitely had a lasting impression. Brenna, let me ask you this too about uh, back to the students because I'm always thinking about the youth. Yeah, and, it's all about you know, the, the kids. It's always about yeah. the kids. I noticed one thing too that um, another part of competing is how you take care of your body off the field. Like, I've always been impressed mm-hmm. with you that um, you always take care of yourself year-round. Is that something else, too, that gets understated sometimes? Yeah. You are what you eat and all that stuff. Yeah, it is. You know, you can't just 
live off. Doritos, yeah, and, right? and the older you get, the the more you see that. <laughs> right. The more you understand it. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, the nutrition has to be there. Everything. I mean, the countless hours that we put in, we put in more hours off the field than on the field, obviously. But yep. it's 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 almost like triple. Okay. You know, and our body is something we cold tub every day, hot tub in the morning. Okay. You know, this treatment, those guys in the treatment rooms are, are the best. You yep. know, and we stay there consistently. I mean, it's it's. Tr- I come home and put the boots on or put the game ready on, and it's you know it's, it's something like ice and pressure and. I, I, sometimes I do it with my little girl, and it's, it's we have some fun, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's you got to take care of your body to play this game for a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and this is year eight, and this is probably the year that I've done the most. Yeah. You know. Uh, so that's 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 what that's the only thing you have is yeah. your body. So yeah. you might as well take care of it. Now, speaking of which, um, have you ever seen anything like this, uh, Odell Beckham Jr.? Um, no, he's talented. You yeah. know, that one catch was really good and he came out of nowhere, uh, but those guys can help your team on. He did. He did a really good job. And, uh, you know, it, it seems like the giants finds, yeah. find those receivers types. Now I always like talking to you about the, uh, the incoming draft. Who's the player that you think we should watch out for in the recent draft? Um, that, like I said, I don't, I don't really, we got a, we got a pretty good kid. Uh, Williams, he's a, fell to you, right? He was supposed to go ahead of right or no Leonard, Leonard Williams is our guy right but yeah, he yeah. was supposed to be drafted earlier right he fell to the Jets yes or? he did he did yeah yeah uh, I mean, that I think was he had some injuries him, right? yeah, yeah I mean he, he was a six pick right and it was like he fell like yeah. where did he fall from you know <laughs> uh, but, but he was predicted to go what yeah three maybe one, one two or three yeah yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah I talked yeah. to him a little bit actually about it uh, he's slippery kid he's gonna be a good player yeah. you know I think he has to. He, just like you just have to get used to the game, the speed of the game. Yeah. Uh, he did a pretty good job in OTAs, yeah. and, but it, everything changes with the pads on. So yeah. uh, We'll see. You know, they didn't draft them that high for no reason. Got you it. Know, so. Brent, what's, what's the, what do you think the future is with the NFL um, playing across the world? Like, I, how do the players feel about playing in London? And um, Right now, it's kind of like, you know, it's a long flight. Okay. But the way they're setting it up, they set up a bye week right after it. So it's actually kind of cool, you know. I, I'm actually going to have a chance to go to London this year, and uh, hopefully we can stay out there for a few days. Maybe yeah. they make it an interaction thing where you go out to these countries and and you and learn a little bit about them, kind of like what we're doing a, with AFWB. You know, we okay. throw a football camp and then we go on three, four tours. You okay. Know? So, um, so do you see that growing? Yeah, that I do. Aspect of the NFL. Yeah, I do, and, and that's what we're trying to do with AFWB too. You know, it's. It's grow the game internationally. They actually have this international championships in Canton, Ohio, this weekend. Okay, so it, that's pretty cool. You know, if you, I've, I've been following it a little bit on, online, yeah. but uh, you know, with Mexico right there, I mean, China is a little bit of ways, but th- that's the that's the thing that kind of messes it up is is just the travel and. And I was going to say for uh, viewers back home, the time change, right? Yeah, the time change. Yeah. That's that's big and yeah. And the very next week, you got to go out and play again. But right. that's the thing. If they if they can time it up right where there's a bye week right after, uh, I think it makes sense. You know, the more fans, the better. Now, I hear a lot of the players aren't too pleased with the Thursday night games. Is that No, that's terrible. Yeah. Do you see that staying or going? Or? Uh, I see it staying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's tough it's, on a player, at, right? Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. And talk about your body. You know, that recovery mode starts instantly. Yeah. I mean, it, you're – they they feeding you water, you know, you got to go right back into the ice tub. Um, they slow down practice. We don't really – we do walkthroughs for three days, you know, and it's it's a mental challenge too. People don't – you know, it's so physical, so physical. Uh, 70, 80% of football is mental, you yeah. know. Uh, so it's, it's tough. Uh, but it is a night game, so, you know, hopefully you have a noon game on Sunday and then you play that Thursday night – you know, that's a five, six extra hours, but everything helps. What's your prediction on less exhibition, more regularly scheduled games? Do you ever see that happening? Uh, I hope I hope not because of the young guys. You know, in the preseason, that's where the old guys play. That's where I was playing for four years. Okay. Uh, so it's part of the experience a little bit. And if you only have two, you don't give these guys a chance to actually make the team. Okay. Because in those two weeks, the starters need to get ready for the – for the you know for the regular season okay um so yeah at the end of the day it's a business so we'll see what happens but okay. i hope not just because of young guys okay um 
we're getting toward the end, but I know one thing that must please you when you come home is uh, seeing what uh, Joe Levine has done for our recreation department. Yes, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in the past it was sort of um, half on, half off, but he's really taken this thing to mm-hmm. a whole new level. And uh, back to your, you know, stressing that it's important that we get the youth early. Mm-hmm. It's got to be gratifying to see you and all the things he's involved with. Yeah, it's it's you know I've talked to him a little bit like growing up in Somerville we had a, something where it was just a red box at the park, and one of the high school guys came and unlocked it and. Here you go. Go play for four hours. Yeah. You know, so uh, that's that's really cool, and and it's just another way to keep these kids, you know, out of trouble. Right. You know, um, there's a lot of temptations and and that type of thing. But if you're gonna go play, you know, alley oop or or twenty one or three on three for four hours, that's a better you know, it's a better decision than what you were about to do. You yeah, know? and that's and why that, we've taken our cue from you. I mean, since the yeah. first day I met you, it's always been about the youth so yeah. now we have that uh teen center we have the rec department Let yeah it's about Levine. the kids they're, they're the future you know? summer jobs just started we get about 300 of those good yeah good. and uh we just are a participant now in youth pass where our students here can get a discount to t pass to go to work and good that's it, that's so. perfect you know it's, yeah. that's great to hear and yeah. uh that's he's something f- i did have and some of them were, they had a program similar to it, and so the the way he's done it, you know, follow him on Facebook and all that stuff. So yeah, uh, it, it's good. You know, what do you see if you've thought about it? What do you see after football? What do you see yourself doing? You know, and this is like <laughs> kind of like take care of your body. The older you get, that's you see this more and more often. You know, it's say they say to, to always have a plan B. You know, and then, I didn't think I was going to play a year in the NFL. Um, so I've always had a dream of owning my own construction company and slash real estate, you know. I remember uh, that. <laughs> yeah. And so that's that's something that I've actually worked a lot on this off season. Um I got three LLCs set up in, huh. in, in Kentucky and I really would, just, w- would it be commercial, residential, or uh, both? both. I want to do a little bit of both. Right okay. now I'm just kinda I'm going with residential right now, you know, just kinda lear- learning the ropes. Okay. Uh and it's from the bottom up, you know. I'm going to become a realtor real soon and and just educate myself to do something because it only takes one play, you know. Okay. Somebody could wipe me out again and next time my foot's planted in the ground and I can't play football. So, and I have a 6-year-old to pay, you know, I got to take care of her, so smart. It's um it's it's just in my blood. My dad's been a, a construction guy, so yeah. It's just something I know I like, you know, I like to do it. I love to do it really. Yeah. Um, so, so Malden youth always have a plan B. I mean, yes, that, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause I know a lot that just get into one silo and they never come out. No, you got, you yeah. can't do that. You know, yeah. you, you got to make yourself feel uncomfortable a little bit and yeah. try new things. You yeah. know, um, it, it's, it's worked for me. So, yeah. So what, um, what restaurant can we count on you visiting? It's every gotta, every a, single right? time. The big A. No question. <laughs> Every single time. Okay. You know? uh, and what'd you go with? If it's we it's may a ask. lot of chicken palm every all time. The, all the time. Mayo, yeah. cheese, and sauce. <laughs> there and you it's go. Right? Like, and you know, I try to eat healthy, but the, you know. Once it's, in a while, uh, you got to splurge, right? Yeah, exactly. So we got to work on uh, having that sandwich renamed, right? I mean, yeah. That's, I think that <laughs> that's will the make go-to. that a Mayo, project. cheese, and sauce. You got to, Mayo, people like cheese, Mayo. and sauce. You got that one? You got to try it, all right? Mayo, yeah. cheese, and sauce. It, uh, we'll work it, with them, see if we can have that done. I've been there since December 1st, 98. <laughs> All right, good. Well, I think it's ironic, too, today that exactly one year ago yeah, yeah. we declared Breno Giacomini Day yeah. here in Malden. That's pretty uh, cool. You yeah. received the first ever key to the city, and yeah. um, uh, the team here just couldn't be uh, more excited to ironically have you here today on this no, podcast on that day. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Um, is there anything else you want to close out with? Um, you have the mic. Um, anything you want to say to the it's a, yeah, all the it's community? A, it's just you know I appreciate the support. You know the love is there, and I see it. You know I just walking into the city hall today. Yeah. Ladies, like, can I take a picture of you? I'm like, <laughs> you don't want to join in? Like, <laughs> let's take a picture together. Yeah. But it's you know it's all about the kids and and just keep pushing, keep studying. Okay. You know, uh, and if people want to learn more about the organization, is there a website or they could just Google it? Yeah, yeah, it? it's uh, afwbcamp.com. Okay, okay A-F-W-B great. Afwbcamp.com. Okay, great. Well, we want to thank our uh, guest today, uh, Breno Giacomini, Malden High School's own Breno Giacomini. And, again, I want to end by how I started, which is 
He is someone that could be long gone with Malden in the rearview mirror, but that is not Breno Giacomini. He mm-hmm. has always remembered where he started, mm-hmm. and to me, that is a lesson for us all. So, Absolutely. Breno, thank you. Continued success, me. and we appreciate everything you mean to us. Thank you, guys. All right.